Hello and welcome to another episode of Learning English. I am Thekla Uzozi. Today we'll be learning everything about the verbs. Now, at the end of this lesson, you should be able to define the verb, know the types of verbs, and give examples. You will also learn about models. You will also learn about auxiliary verbs, the main and auxiliary verbs. You're going to learn about irregular and regular verbs as well. So at the end of this lesson, you should be able to differentiate between these various types of verbs. Now, what is a verb? A verb is a word that shows action or state. A verb is a word that shows action or state. Now, a verb can tell us what someone is doing or where someone is. A verb can tell us what someone is doing at the moment. What am I doing? I am teaching. She is standing. This is what verbs do. So, we have the types of verbs. We have the stative verb. Now, the stative verb. This type of verb expresses situations or a state of being. Example of this type of verb, examples of this type of verb, be, own, have, and think. This type of verbs cannot be used in the continuous tense. Example, I have a large family. This is telling us what I have. I cannot say I am having a large family. You cannot use this verb in this manner. Another sentence, Tunde likes ice cream. You cannot say Tunde liking ice cream. This is not a correct way of expressing this sentence. So you cannot use this type of verbs in ing forms. I have a large family. Tunde likes ice cream. Now, that is it for stative verbs. These verbs can also be called state verbs. So if you hear state verbs, just know that they are referring to stative verbs. Now, action verbs. They express physical activities or processes. These type of verbs are used to express physical activities or processes. Example, run, kick, sit. I am running. She is kicking. She is kicking the ball. She is sitting down. Now, the girls are kicking the ball, an example. Unlike this verb, unlike the stative verb, you can use action verbs in ing forms. Who is shouting? You can use it in ing forms and it will make complete sense. But you cannot do that with the stative verb. Now, the main and auxiliary verbs. The main verb, in English language, a verb can either be a main verb or an auxiliary verb. A main verb, the verb that is telling us what action is happening in the sentence, and the auxiliary or helping verb, the verb that is helping the main verb in the sentence. For example, we have, Edit is teaching now. Is is the auxiliary verb in this sentence. Teaching is the main verb. So this verb here is helping this verb to function. Now, the auxiliary verbs we have are do, be, and have. Now, one of the main functions of an auxiliary verb is that it shows tense. Now, let's take a look at this sentence again. Edit is teaching now. Now, what this verb is doing, what this auxiliary or helping verb is doing in this sentence is telling us, telling us the tense. It's helping us know that this is happening in the present. Even if we remove this, even if we remove now, 
This sentence will make complete sense. Edit is teaching. So this is happening in the present. Auxiliary verbs, auxiliary verbs help us know the tense. Now, you should know that it's only verb that can have tenses. Verbs are the only parts of speech that can tell us about tense, whether something is happening in the present or happened in the past or is going to happen in the future. So, auxiliary verbs also help us form sentences in the negative. Edit isn't teaching now. Now, isn't is the auxiliary verb, and this is a contraction of is not. Now, this apostrophe here is to show us that it, a letter is missing from this, so is not. So, isn't is the contraction. So, edit is isn't teaching now. And this sentence is telling us that edit is not teaching at the moment. So, another thing that auxiliary verbs do is help us ask questions. Is that a teaching now? Is, is the auxiliary verb. Teaching is the main verb. Is edit teaching now? So, auxiliary verbs help us ask questions. Now, is, I mentioned that do, be and have are the auxiliary verbs that we have. Now, you might wonder why is. Is is a form of be or the verb to be. So don't get, don't get confused. Is is a form of the verb to be. Now, let's make use of the auxiliary verb do in sentences. Do you play in class? Do is helping us, is helping us ask questions. This is do helping us ask questions. And number two, I don't play in class. This is do functioning in the negative. It's helping us know that I do not play in class. Now, have. I have visited the museum three times. Now, auxiliary verbs help us a lot, especially have in this sentence. I have visited the museum three times. Now, if we say, I visited the museum, we are, we, we've just said that, okay, we've not really said if, we've not talked about how many times we have visited. We just, we're not being specific. But if we say, I have visited the museum three times, have here is telling us that it's not just once, it's more than once, and this is a life experience. That is what have, the auxiliary verb have is helping us do in this sentence. Now, auxiliary verbs can also function as main verbs. Example, in this sentence, I have a car. I have a car. Now, have is an auxiliary verb, but in this sentence, it is functioning as a main verb. Have, in this sense, means own. I own a car. So auxiliary verbs not only help main verbs, they can also function as main verbs, as have in this sentence. Now, let's move over to models. What are models? Models help us express mood in sentences. And some of the models we have, can, could, may, might, will. Some of the models we have, can, could, may, might, will, would, shall, should, and must. Now, what is mood? Mood is the attitude of the speaker in a sentence. So models help us communicate the mood of the speaker. Now let's look at this sentence. Jide might come first in class this term. Now, the mood of this speaker is telling us that, is telling us that they are not sure, but they are about 
probably 60% sure that GD will come first in class. So if we say, if we change this to will, GD will come first in class this term. I am trying to, we are sure, we are certain that GD is going to come first in class this term. So that is what models help us to do. Now, models, models can also express ability. They can help us express ability. For example, when I say I can play drums, I can play the guitar, I can play is telling us that I have the ability to do something. I can do something. So another thing that models do is give, help us make sentences in the negative to express permission. Now let's look at this sentence. You mustn't come to school late. This is a contracted form of must not. You mustn't come to school late. This sentence is simply telling us that you do not have permission to come to school late. You are not supposed to come to school late. So these are what models help us do in sentences. Now, just like the adverbs and adjectives, verbs have regular and irregular forms. Now, let's take a look at this sentence, this verbs. This is the infinitive form, the base or the base. So you have to cook. The present tense is cook. Past tense, cooked. Past participle, cooked. And the ing form, cooking. This is a regular verb. Now let's look at this. This verb, be, it has three present tense forms, am, is, and are. The past tense, was, and were. Past participle, being, and then the ing form, being. Now, I mentioned that only verbs have tenses. And there are five forms that a verb can appear in. And that is the infinitive or the base, the present tense, the past tense, past participle, and the ing or continuous tense. So we have the regular verbs like cook, cooked, cook, cooked, cooked, and cooking. Now this verb, the past participle, the past and past participle forms have ed, you add ed to them to make both the past and, partici and past participle form. But this type of verb, to go, you have the present tense, go, and goes. You have the past tense, went. You have the past participle, gone. And you have the ing form, going. Now look at the past and then the past participle. You would see that they do not correlate. You cannot guess this past and past participle forms if you are following the regular way of forming the past and past participle forms of verbs. Now let's look at another one, the verb to be. It has am, is, and are as the present tense forms. Then we, we, it has was and where as the past, being as the past participle, and being as the ing form. This also, you see that there is, there is an irregular way of conjugating these verbs in this past and past participle forms. Now, we have another verb, read. The present tense is read or reads. The past, read. The past participle, read. You pronounce this as red like the color red. So, and the ing form is reading. So, verbs can be irregular or regular. Now, let's move over to the transitive and intransitive verbs. What is a transitive verb? 
A transitive verb is a type of verb that takes an object. A transitive verb is a verb that takes an object. Example, heat, give, carry. These are verbs that must have objects. Now let's take for instance, I hit a chair. I hit a chair. Now for you to know transitive verbs, they answer the question, what? If I tell you I hit, you would ask me, hit what? What did you hit? Now, I hit a chair. I made a cake. Oh, the verb make. If you say, I made a cake, or I made, made what? I made a cake. Now let's look at another example. The, the thief climbed and escaped. Climbed what? Climb is, an, is a transitive verb, so it has to have an object. Now, transitive verbs must have objects. This is one of the mistakes that students in English make. They, they write verbs without, they write transitive verbs without putting the object. So you must put the object of a transitive verb. Now, if you say the thief climbed and escaped, climbed what? Probably you have a picture of a wall or a gate. You have to mention that object. The thief climbed the wall and escaped. So the transitive verb must have an object attached to it. Now, intransitive verbs, these are verbs that do not have objects. They do not need objects when writing them. Example, leave, die, laugh, cry, run, sit. Now, he died. The sentence makes complete sense. I'm simply telling you that somebody died. She laughed quietly. Now, it does not, this is an adverb, so it, it's not like it has a, something after it, and you now begin to think that it is, it is a transitive verb. No, this verb is intransitive. Now, for you to know an intransitive verb, if you ask what, he died, died what? You don't need, you don't need an answer to that question. He died, it is a complete tense, and you know it makes meaning. It makes perfect sense. You know exactly what it's talking about. She laughed quietly. She laughed. If you say she laughed, it's correct. You don't even need to add quietly. So transitive verbs are verbs that must take objects. They, they must have objects. While intransitive verbs are verbs that do not need objects in sentences. Now, we said that a verb is a word that shows an action or state. And we said that there are types of verbs, stative verbs, these express situations or state of being. Be, own, have, think. These are the examples of stative verbs. And these verbs cannot be used in the ing form, ing or continuous form. Example, I have a large family. Tunde likes ice cream. You cannot say, I have a large family or I am having a large family. No, you do not use these verbs in the continuous form. Now we have the action verbs that express physical activities or processes, such as run, kick, sit, grow. They express physical activities or processes. The girl is growing. She is growing up. So the girls are kicking the ball. What are they kicking? They are kicking the ball. And you can write these verbs in continuous tense or ing forms, unlike the stative verbs. Now we have the main verbs, which are the main verbs in the sentence, the verb that is doing the action, that is showing us the action that is happening in the sentence. And we have the auxiliary verb the auxiliary verbs that help 
the main verbs. Auxiliary verbs can also be called the helping verb. And they help us in one, they help us show tense. Example, Edit is teaching now. They help us form negative sentences. Edit is in teaching now. They help us ask questions. Is Edit teaching now? And I mentioned that is is a form of the verb be or the verb to be. Now, do also helps us in sentence, in ask questions. Do you play in class? Do in asking questions. I don't play in class. Do in the negative. Now, have is a very interesting auxiliary verb because it can be used as an auxiliary verb and it can be used just like the others as a main verb. Now, I have visited the museum three times. This is telling us about a life experience. It's, telling, it's not telling us about a particular visit. If you say, I, visit, I visited the museum, you are correct. But if you put have in the sentence, I have visited the museum. So have is the third auxiliary verb. And this is used to show life experience. Now let's take a look at this sentence again. I have visited the museum three times. Now, I have visited the museum three times. I'm trying to tell us that this is not just a particular visit. It's not one visit. I am telling you about a life experience. Now, just like the other auxiliary verbs, sometimes have can be used as a main verb as well. Now, I have a car. Have in this sense means own. It's telling us that I have a car. I own a car. So we talked about models that help us express mood in sentences. And we have examples, can, could, may, might, will, would, shall, should, and must. And mood is the attitude of the speaker. In grammar, mood is the attitude of the speaker. And for example, Jide might come first in class this term. So I'm telling you that I am not sure, but Jide is likely to come first in class this term. This term. And then we also said that models express ability. I can play the guitar. I'm telling you that I can do something. I have the ability to do something. So models also help us express verbs in the negative. You mustn't come to school late. You mustn't. You must not. This is telling us that you do not have permission to come to school late. So we discussed regular and irregular verbs. And I mentioned that only verbs have tenses. So there are five forms of verbs, the infinitive or the base, present, past, past participle, and the continuous or ing form. So we have the regular verbs, the regular verb to cook, that's the infinitive or base form. Then we have the present, cook. We have the past, cooked, past participle, cooked, and the ing, cooking. Now, we, we saw some irregular verbs such as to go, go, be, and read. So go, the present tense is go or goes, past, went, past participle, gone, ing form, going. Now, this is irregular because you do not derive the past and past participle form by adding ed. So you cannot have something like go. That is wrong. So we discuss the, the transitive and intransitive verbs. Transitive verbs are verbs that take objects in sentences. Uh, verbs like heat, give, make, carry. I made a cake, or I make cake. What did you make, cake? So if you ask the question what, the transitive verb can answer it. So that's how you know transitive verb. And just like that, you know intransitive verbs. Intransitive verbs do not take objects. So there are verbs like like, die, laugh, cry, run, sit. He died. It makes complete sense. So that is how intransitive verbs function. She laughed. This makes sense as well. She laughed quietly. This adverb is telling us how she laughed. She didn't laugh loudly. She laughed quietly. Remember also that the object of a transitive verb is very important to it. This is one thing you should know. Always add the object of a transitive verb 
to the sentence. For example, the thief climbed the wall and escaped. Now, you're telling us what the thief climbed because this is, climb is a transitive verb. Now, if I make that sentence and say, the thief climbed and escaped, climbed what? The object has to be there. So that is it about verbs. I hope you learned something. Until I come your way next time, this has been Learning English, and I am Thekla Uzozie. Bye-bye.